now it's time to move on to creating a custom connector so that Power Apps can consume this. So how do we do that? Well, first up, we need some information. If I click Get Function URL, I have to copy this URL. And let me put it into Notepad just quickly so that it's we can examine this because um, a lot of people, uh, when they ask me questions on the videos, I think the biggest mistake people make is they don't pay attention to the URL and the parameters that are uh, there. So you can see here that my Azure function, I click Get Function URL. And so this script, it listens on this endpoint, colmseapps.azurewebsites.net forward slash API. You can see the name of my function, MuseFeed, and then it passes a parameter called code. So this is literally like a API key, if you like. Without this code, the function will not work. All right. The reason I'm calling that out is we're going to need this in a little while. So now let's look at how we're going to build a custom connector. OK, so I've just signed into my Power Apps environment and I've just gone down to the custom connectors. Now, I've got a whole bunch of custom connectors. Don't worry about all these. We're actually going to make a brand new one. Now, here's the thing. When you click Create Custom Connector, it gives you some choices. It goes, well, you can make a blank one or you can import an open API file or you can import an OPA, open API from URL, URL or import a Postman collection. A lot of my writing and a lot of my videos showed this method, open API file, but I thought just for something different, I'll do the postman collection method. So what I'm going to do is before we do this, we need to make a postman collection. So let's go to postman. Now, what is postman? Postman is this really useful uh, tool that basically um, is used for web service debugging. So kind of in the way Fiddler is used as well, for those of you that know that. So the nice thing about Postman, it allows you to record different web service calls and manipulate them, do all sorts of things. So what we're going to do is this. First up, I'm going to change the query type to a post. This is Postman. And the URL for this request is going to be the one that we have in Notepad, which is this news feed. So let's go in and post that in there. So there is my post request. And I'm not even going to bother with anything else. I'm going to leave everything else as is and see what we get. So if I send that, I do the post. And what we should see is the very same JSON, there it is, that we saw in the Azure function. So that's great. We're actually seeing the, the stuff that we're interested in. Wonderful. Now, the, um, the thing is, though, what we now have to do in terms of... Um, uh, Postman is create a collection. So if you come over to the save dialog box here, okay, and we'll do a save as, and I'm going to call this request MuseFeed. <coughs> Description, um, retrieve, feline, goodness. And I now have to create a collection to store this. So a collection is a number of web requests. So click create collection and I will also call this MuseFeed and I click the little tick box and click save I believe it is done and so I now have this collection over here called MuseFeed right which is great the thing is we haven't actually got everything done yet because that that saved the request we made it didn't save the response so over on the right here, you can see save response. And we need this response because this is what we need to build the schema that Power Apps is going to use to understand everything. So if I go save response, and I'm going to call this MuseFeed response and save it as an example, we have now added the response to the request, right? So now here we are back at the request. Um, so as a final check, just make sure there are no headers listed here. OK, that's why I went back to the main page, because if there are, you've got to strip them just because Flow puts its own headers in and things can get upset. So if you confirm there are no headers here, you can now go to the Muse feed and we can go um, export and we save it as a collection version one file. So go export. I will save this to my desktop for now. Muse feed postman collection. I'll just put uh, demo, YouTube demo. I think I have another one there. Right, save, done. So we have now built, saved a request and a response. And now we're going to use this to build our custom connector. 
So now we, reach, we are back into the land of Power Apps and I create custom connector and I choose import a Postman collection. I give it a name. I'll call it Muse Feed again because I'm, I'm not particularly um, have a good imagination. Um, and if I pick the collection file now, if I click continue, it's now going to process that file. And we get to the screen. Now, this is important. Um, because I named everything MuseFeed, you'll see MuseFeed stamped around here quite a lot. Um, but this is where you get to change some of this stuff. So the description here retrieves the MuseFeed list from the cat-related SharePoint content. Except I should spell cat instead of lat. So I click continue. You can see it's picked up our URL. Um, authentication, um, uh, we could spend time talking about this and how this can be made, like the code could be made as a parameter. I'm not going to do it for now, so I'm just going to click continue. And now we come to the main part. So this is the actual definition itself. So again, um, muse feed. So the operation ID, what I'm going to do is call it muse feed and I'm going to call this get, get feed. And you'll see in Power Apps later on, you'll see musefeed.getfeed as the name of the function. Um, if we come down here, here is the code. Now, this is an important one too. That code corresponds directly to this code here, right? And I've seen two problems with doing it this way. Number one, um, Postman seems to strip off the non-printable characters so the equal signs disappear. That's the first one. So if I click on this ellipsis and go edit, I can cut, and yeah, you can see it, there it is. It's stripped them off. In fact, just to double check, big W, little W, big W, little W. So I'm gonna put those two equal signs back in. Now, if you don't want Power Apps to prompt for this, I've set a default value here. And if you set it to the visibility to internal, that means Power Apps will not prompt you to put this in. It will use this one by default. So that's the other thing we need to do. So having made that change, I click back, and that is that bit done. If you actually then, this is, it's kind of hidden. You don't even know it's there, but the, the 200 response is basically equates to, in Postman, we got a 200 okay, and here was all of the data that came back, right? And so that 200 response says, if you get a 200 response, you will expect to see a schema that matches the data here. So if I have a look here, and we click this, you can see all of the various columns, right, that corresponds exactly to all of these parameters. And in fact, things like, and it'll infer data type too. So rank and doc ID, depending on how it went, if you go to rank and we go edit this, it's come up as an integer. Now, if you go actually no, based my sample data, it came up as numbers, but really it's string. This is your chance where you can actually change the data type here. Now, in this case, we're not gonna to touch any of this stuff, right? We're gonna assume that the data type, it inferred all the data types correctly from all of this sample data. What I'm gonna do is actually just simply click back and I'm happy with everything else. I'm gonna go create connector. So Power Apps thinks about things. Occasionally you'll see uh, messages pop up. <coughs> and then you have a message, happy message that says the connector has been successfully created. So if we close out of here, and if I refresh my list of custom connectors, and there is our Muse feed. Now what we're gonna do is test this. Let's, let's do the next stage of testing. So if I click the edit button again, and I'm gonna come up here as a test option here, right? Now, when I come into test, it actually says, well, wait a second, you can't test without a connection. Now this might seem counterintuitive if you haven't done much Power Apps before. Um, but basically, the, it makes sense because really you can, um, a Power App has a data source. A data source uses a connection to uh, via a connector hence the terminology, to connect to a data source. So to test this connector, I need a connection. So I'm just gonna build it right here and right now. Come into here, there's MuseFeed, there's my lovely uh, description, go create. I now create a connection. This connection, by the way, can also be used by Flow. And it actually redirects me back to my connections page. And if you come down here, we should see there's my Muse feed connection that was just made two seconds ago. Now that's kind of counterintuitive because you actually have to go back to custom connectors now 
and go back to your connector to actually run the test. That took me a while to figure out. Um, so go back to Muse Feed, go back to test, and now we have a connection. Now at this point, the code is actually there. You've got our uh, equal signs in the code and it's not editable. And that's because I marked it as internal back in the definition. All right. Um, at this point, if I go test operation, it goes and executes this and it sees if the data that comes back matches that schema. And so you'll see very quickly, it looks like it worked. We had a 200 response and here is all of the data from the search and it says, yep, the schema was cool. The data types, everything matched up and I am happy, I'm a happy camper. So we are done with our custom connector. We have MuseFeed. Now let's actually get into the world of Power Apps and build ourselves an app and let's do some coolness here.